Hey, it's Rudy here. Um, I wanted to I wanted to go over a video that just landed on YouTube uh, a few days ago, and I think this is going to change some people's lives. So that's why I wanted to to cover it to give my perspective on it. This is an update from a company called Neuralink. If you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend looking into it. Uh, I'll put some links into the description here. You can go check it out. It's co-founded by Elon Musk, who is the CEO of Tesla, well-known guy, um, makes the tequila that I have on this desk as well, probably his best invention yet. Um, but he has got this other company called Neuralink, and they're specifically focused on creating brain-computer interfaces, which should, which should really make you think about the direction of where we're going as a species and, and what technology is going to be like even 20 to 30 years from now at the rate of exponential growth. So quick background, Neuralink was created to design an array of implantable electrodes. So they implant it into your skull underneath the bone and it's got these extremely thin electrode wires that go into the brain and they read electrical signals that are taking place as your neurons fire. And they can write, uh, which I don't think has been tested much yet, but they're, they're testing the ability to read what the brain is doing. And this update that they gave is a sign of the progress that they're making, and it is frankly outstanding, and further along than I thought they'd be actually at this point. So without further ado, I'm going to go through this. It's not that long of a video. It's like three and a half minutes and kind of give my commentary as we go through it. So let's watch. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learned to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. Now, real quick, one thing that amazed me about this is I didn't even know that monkeys or primates could be trained to play video games. Uh, so that, that, that in itself is kind of cool. It's a neat little reminder that maybe we're not so far away from the other primate species as we'd like to think. The other thing that I think is important to note, and this is something that I kind of worried about and other people worried about is, you know, what's the treatment like of animals at the Neuralink labs, and supposedly it's very good. They're very well taken care of. So anytime there's animal experimentation, there's ethical concerns, but from what I understand, they're doing their utmost to treat these, these animals well. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. By the way, neural implants, it's not actually a new technology. They've been around for a while, and you might have heard of um, like the Utah Array, which is, uh, I think it's what they use to help Parkinson's patients um, stabilize the firing of neurons in their brain. So the idea of implanting electrodes is not necessarily new, but Neuralink is doing it in a way that's much more precise, can read a greater number of channels, so to speak, from the brain, and the implantation is done in such a way to minimize the possibility of bleeding in the brain, etc. So yes, this is it's been done before, but never to this level, not never to this uh, degree of precision. So this is definitely an exponential leap forward in the brain implant technology. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we're wirelessly streaming, in real time, the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. 
This is another big advance of Neuralink, which is even with a, a, an electrode that has a number of different channels to record from your neurons, it's impossible to get down to the resolution of detecting individual neurons. So what you get are spikes of signal in specific areas of the brain, little groups of neurons, and that can be measured. And then what Neuralink has done is basically deployed machine learning algorithms to decode exactly what is taking place to separate the signal from the noise of all the activity that's going on in the brain. It's extremely advanced and it's one of the main areas in which Neuralink is evolving this field. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. Yeah, this was mind blowing to me. Um, so at this point, the monkey is physically moving the joystick, but the joystick's unplugged. So what's moving the cursor on the screen is a direct readout from what the monkey is actually thinking or how the neurons are firing in the brain. So that, that to me was pretty, just unbelievable. I, I did not know that they had gotten this far this quickly. Um, so that, to me, that was, that was pretty incredible to see. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. You could imagine a situation in which the output from the mental readout is then con like basically routed to uh, a different set of electrodes implanted in your in your muscles. So if you had a traumatic spinal cord injury that resulted in paralysis, in theory, you could have mental signals bypass the spinal injury entirely and go directly from brain, uh, let's say to your leg muscles again, to enable someone to walk. So that's like the ultimate, well, one of the ultimate possibilities of this technology. Um, let's, let's continue. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favorite video game, Pong. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. Now that he's up to speed, let's increase the difficulty and see how well Pager can play with the Neuralink. You wonder if uh, this is going to be coming to League of Legends sometime soon. Um, maybe it would be faster reaction time than a keyboard, right? I mean, we joke, but there's a lot of, lot of potential here. Um, not just for the video game industry, obviously, but just for immersive virtual reality more generally. And also increasing the bandwidth between our brains and the technology that we use. I also thought it was really interesting how... Apparently, easily the, the monkey transitioned to not having to physically move its hand. I thought for sure that it would take a while, if it was even possible, to have the monkey be weaned off from physically having to make the movements. But apparently it adapted really well to just using its mind to, to control the game. So I found that fascinating. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. I should get some of that banana smoothie. I bet it tastes pretty good. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Great game, Pager. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? We still have challenges spanning many fields of engineering. So if you're good at solving hard problems and want to change people's lives, even if you've never worked with the brain before, we would love to hear from you. 
Yeah, nice little plug there. They're they're hiring skilled engineers and other types to uh to improve that system. So, in in conclusion, I think what we just witnessed is something approaching history because Elon Musk has stated that the goal of this program and this company is eventually to make full brain computer interfaces that could enable things like essentially like the matrix where you plug into a virtual reality. It could enable um, learning by having the information downloaded to your neurons directly. It could enable telepathy. So you could just think thoughts to other people and have that immediately, um, you know, be received by another person. So, just keep in mind, if you see that kind of technology show up in 10, 15, or 20 years, this is where it started. And this is where the real work is being done to do this. And it's scary. It, a lot of people are freaked out about this. And, you know, they worry about people getting their minds hacked and everything. And there's some legitimate concerns. But ultimately, I think the benefit is going to far outweigh the potential risks. Especially when you consider that as as humanity develops stronger and stronger artificial intelligence, I think the only way that humans are going to be able to keep up is to join with that artificial intelligence or somehow integrate it so that it, it merges with the human conscience, with our values and our morals. And the only way to do that is with, with sophisticated interfaces like this. So let me know what you think. I'd, I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts. Hit me up in the comments. Um, this is really, uh, this is really exciting stuff. So please let me know. We're going to have a conversation about it as always, please like subscribe and hit that notification bell for me. Um, I can't quite just, uh, instruct you to do that telepathically yet. So you'll just have to take my word for it, but I will see you for future episodes of real talk, Rudy. Thanks. Bye.